straight ahead on OC News, fans continue to celebrate the Lakers' win. We'll have details on how special this championship is to the players who were close to Kobe Bryant. Unofficial ballot boxes have been popping up in our country with how spots of real ballots okay, from imposters and different options on getting your vote counted. And the anticipation is over. Prime Day has arrived. You won't want to miss all the tips on how to snag all the amazing deals. This and much more OC News starts now. Welcome and thank you for joining us at OC News. I'm Monica De La Rosa. OC News is brought to you by the broadcast journalism students at Call State Fullerton. Congrats to the, L to the Los Angeles Lakers on winning the NBA championship over the Miami Heat that ended up with a final score of 106 to 93. Eric Valenciano has the latest on what went down on this eventful game. Thank you, Monica. It's not Tinseltown, it's Titletown. The Los Angeles Lakers arrived in LA a couple hours ago from Orlando, Florida, where they've been playing in an NBA bubble since July. Their carry-on luggage, a brand new NBA title to proudly display on their mantle. They of course won the NBA championship last night, defeating the Miami Heat 106-93 in Game 6 of a best of seven series. After a night of celebration, faithful fans lined up at LAX's Atlantic Terminal to welcome their team earlier today. No victory parade has been planned yet, and it isn't expected to be. But the Lakers haven't ruled out the possibility of a virtual parade sometime in the near future. It's the Lakers' first NBA title since 2010 and their 17th all-time, tying the Boston Celtics for most in NBA history. LeBron James' phenomenal performance earned him Finals MVP honors. James became the first player in NBA history to lead three teams to an NBA title. Minutes after the game, he shared the significance of the legacy that comes with winning a title in the purple and gold. This is a historic franchise, and to be a part of this is something that I'll be able to talk about, and my, my grandkids and kids will be able to talk about that their pawpaw or their dad played for the Los Angeles Lakers. The Lakers dedicated their historic season to Kobe Bryant, who tragically passed away in a helicopter accident alongside his daughter Gianna. In what has been an emotional season, Anthony Davis and Rajon Rondo shared memories of their hero. His game and his legacy speak for itself, so me being a, a kid from Louisville, Kentucky, to be able to compete with Kobe two years in the league uh, and understand and learn so much from him by watching his film and studying him is, is definitely an honor. And, and to come full circle and to win uh, in his honor, his, his daughter's honor, um, unbelievable season that what we've had. And you know, you know, before the, the tragedy, he, he you know, would come to the game and he would just tell us, like, this is your year. This is y'all year, and, and go out there and, and, and take it. It's an exciting day to be an L.A. sports fan. The Chargers are kicking off in New Orleans in just a bit, and the Dodgers are playing in Arlington. I've got updates on both coming up in just a few minutes, so stay tuned. But for now, we send it back to Monica. Whether we like it to admit it or not, parking at Call State Fullerton is always a topic for a discussion. We go live with Jacqueline Davis, where the latest on what parking is like on campus at Call State Fullerton. Jacqueline? I'm standing in the parking lot behind Humanities Building, where this place is usually a prime spot for this time of day. And with a handful of essential workers, you can tell this place is a complete ghost town. Well, the real question that everybody is wondering is why is parking required to be paid? eerie mm -hmm. um, it's like basically just like a ghost town on campus I think I heard that there's about like a thousand students on campus per day Cal State Fullerton is home to over 40,000 students staff and faculty on a day-to-day -day basis that looks like clouded classrooms and long lines to pick up food but with everything being virtual this fall semester that means not even half of those people are on campus 
I'm standing out here in front of the newest addition of the east side parking structure. The big question is, why are students having to pay for parking when no one is here? With these empty parking lots, students still have to pay $10 a day or $2.50 for the entire semester. I talked to Professor Berenger, the newsroom advisor for Daily Titan. He talks about the AM stations between 12.30 AM and 12.50 AM. The, uh, uh, there is a voice, and it's a woman who works for the Fullerton Police Department, telling people where they can find parking. Professor Berenger expressed how other CSU campuses don't have to pay such a high price, while teachers don't even pay attention because it gets taken out of their paycheck. Faculty is hardly paying anything at all, and in fact, most of them don't even notice the money coming out of their paychecks. The university also had a chance to buy a parking lot last year, um, ready-made. They would have had to paint it, of course, but, but it was paved already on Chapman Avenue down by uh, Raymond and Chapman. Haley Addy is a member of the Titan Shops as a lead gear associate. And as a faculty member, um, I don't get a discount. I still have to pay like the full price. So that's kind of disappointing. Um, but yeah, no, I, I guess I'm a little disappointed about it. Mm -hmm. Parking, I feel like at school is never that fun. So this is definitely added to that. As we look to a virtual spring semester, the parking lot situation will remain fluid and the campus hopes to operate normally next fall. US campuses have a fat, flat half rate compared to the Fullerton campus. Honestly, it's nice to come to campus 10 minutes before class and just be able to walk on. Reporting live, I'm Jacqueline Davis with OC News. Our parking lots will be fairly empty until fall, but that same can't be said for all campuses. Here, Mariah Ross with an update on local school plans to welcome students back. The school district is set to begin hybrid learning for their 21 schools October 13th. In an effort to support their students and the parents, the district will offer a five-day learning program where distance learning can happen on campus. In a similar fashion, La Habra City School District will slowly transition students back in for hybrid learning starting October 19th. By November 16th, the district expects to have all students, kindergarten through 8th grade, back in the classroom for morning and afternoon sessions. While most schools in the area are welcoming students back, Newport Mesa Unified School District announced they will be delaying in-person classes until at least January for their middle and high school students. Despite allowing the kindergarten through sixth grade students to return to campus earlier this month, the district cites lingering safety and educational plan concerns. Meeting for various other districts, include Buen including Buena School District, are scheduled in the coming weeks to discuss more students' return to campus. There are currently six wildfires in California being fought by firefighters in an effort to have them fully contained. However, since these fires have not had any major growth or change in behavior, they have been officially removed as fires of interest. Due to the high pressure buildings over these fires, California will continue to have warm and dry weather this week. Temperatures are expected to rise above average with no chance of any rainfall. Temperatures will likely range from the high 80s to 90 range. Northern California can also expect a change in wind starting Wednesday and following into Friday. Overall, it looks like we will continue to have a very sunny and hot fall. Says he did not give the Trump campaign permission to feature him in the latest campaign ad, plus the power of we, a Sesame Street special that will help kids understand racism. Your son wants to get a cat. When I was in foster care, I never knew when I would have to move. So I always had my suitcase ready to go. Then one day I was adopted. My new parents opened their hearts and home to me. My parents cook my favorite breakfast for me every morning. My parents take me on trips I never thought I would go on. They gave me a home and an even better reason to use that suitcase. My parents aren't perfect but they're perfect for me. Dr. Fauci, director of the NIH, 
says he was taken out of context in President Trump's latest COVID-19 campaign. I can't imagine that anybody could be doing more. Despite never endorsing a political campaign, Dr. Fauci is seen in the ad speaking highly of the way President Trump has handled the coronavirus. Fauci told CNN on Saturday that the quotes used in the campaign were taken from an interview where he discussed federal public health issues. President Trump's campaign director made a statement regarding Fauci's claim, saying the words were accurate because they came from his mouth. They declined that the words were taken out of context, instead claiming Fauci was phrasing the president's actions. There is still no word on whether the ad will be taken down or revised following Fauci's statement. Democratic candidate Joe Biden is officially leading in his race against President Trump. Joe Biden is holding steady in his lead against President Trump, both nationally and statewide. Biden is in the lead in several states, leading up to nine points in some states. Despite this lead, Democrats continue to urge voters on social media against satisfaction. Following the latest presidential race, they are urging voters against believing that they have the race in the bag. Instead, reactions on social media following Biden's lead pushed even more on the importance of voting and stressed that the polls don't mean that the outcome will be the same. Unofficial ballots have been popping up throughout California. The boxes went unreported for several days and it's unclear how many people use them and what will happen to those ballots. Today, the California GOP said the boxes belong to them and they declined. They say how many of these boxes they own and exactly where they have been placed. Officials are warning the public not to use them and official boxes will be clearly marked with the county's election logo. Today marks one of those Supreme Court hearings for Judge Amy Connie Barrett. With nearly five hours of clashing between committees members, many issues aroused. Camila Bernal gives us the latest details on this historic day. The committee vote may be all but guaranteed. Unless something really dramatic happens, all Republicans will vote yes and all Democrats will vote no. But the political stakes on Capitol Hill this week couldn't be greater as senators hear directly from President Donald Trump's Supreme Court pick, Judge Amy Coney Barrett. If confirmed, it would be the honor of a lifetime to serve alongside the Chief Justice and seven associate justices. The controversial nomination Only hearing kicking off just 22 days before the election and in the midst of the coronavirus pandemic. Democrats have argued unsuccessfully the committee should wait. But Republicans have pressed on and now Barrett is in the spotlight with Democrats focusing on the president's efforts to end Obamacare. He wants his Supreme Court and this nominee to join him in eliminating the Affordable Care Act and Republicans touting Barrett's qualifications. Judge Barrett brings impeccable credentials, a judicial temperament, and a faithfulness to the law. On Tuesday and Wednesday, the questions will come directly from the senators in what will likely include some of the most contentious moments. I believe Americans of all backgrounds deserve an independent Supreme Court that interprets our Constitution and laws as they are written. Tonight's another big night for L.A. sport fans. Both the Dodgers and Chargers are playing tonight. Let's kick it out to Eric Valenciano for a special sports update. Eric? Thanks, Monica. The last time the Dodgers and Lakers both won a world championship in the same year was 1988. The Lakers did their job last night. The Dodgers are fighting to complete theirs tonight. They're playing in game one of the National League World Series, excuse me, they are playing in game one of the National League Championship Series. The winner of the best of seven series goes on to play in the World Series. Walker Buehler took the mound earlier in the hour looking to avenge a 2018 playoff loss as they take on the Atlanta Braves from Arlington. LA area native Max Freed pitches for the Braves. The score right now is one to nothing in the bottom of the first inning. 
Freddie Freeman hit a solo home run to put the Atlanta Braves ahead. It's the first MLB game this year to have fans. They limited attendance to 11,500 people. Fans are required to stand six feet apart from one another and must wear face masks. It's Atlanta's first NLCS appearance in nearly 20 years, and neither team has lost in the postseason yet this year. Someone will tonight. You can watch the game live on Fox 11 right now. And for those looking ahead to tomorrow and Wednesday, the MLB has announced today that games 2 and 3 will be played at 3 p.m. both days on Fox. In the NFL now, Monday Night Football is going to kick off in just a few minutes from New Orleans. Your Los Angeles Chargers are taking on the New Orleans Saints. There is no score yet because the game hasn't started yet. Chargers quarterback Justin Herbert is making his first Monday Night Football start. The rookie quarterback was drafted 6 overall in this year's draft and was officially named the Chargers starting quarterback last week. Herbert and the Chargers are taking on a familiar face. Former Charger and future Hall of Famer Drew Brees and the New Orleans Saints look to improve on their 2-2 two two record. They can get into first place in the, AFC, in the NFC South with a win. The Chargers came into the game with a 1-3 record and look to upset the Saints with a very important road victory. The game is on right now locally on ABC7 and nationally on ESPN. That's all I've got for sports right now. Let's send it back to Monica. Monica? Still to come, Sesame Street's The Power of We Special Helps Children Learn How to Handle and Deal with Racism. I'm only 17. But I know about investing. Believe in something, buy shares in it, watch it grow. So what if you could invest in the future? The future of kids, like a stock. Not the kind of stock that's about making money, but a stock for social change. A whole new kind of investment called Better Futures. When you invest, it helps kids go to college. I could be one of the first college graduates from my family, the first philanthropist from my neighborhood. And if I'm the first, then maybe there's a second and a third. Believe in us, invest in us, watch us grow. My name is Sydney and I'm your dividend. A new actress has been chosen to play Cleopatra in a new upcoming film, and the Billboard's awards are just around the corner. Tristan is, our stu is in our studio with the weekend's latest entertainment news. Tristan? Thank you, Monica. Actress Gal Gadot has been cast to play as the Queen of Egypt, Cleopatra, in an upcoming film. The Wonder Woman star announced on Twitter Sunday that she has joined forces once again with director Patty Jenkins, who directed the Wonder Woman films. And for the first time, Cleopatra would be told exclusively through the eyes of women. However, the announcement sparked controversy on social media, accusing Gadot for cultural appropriation. Gadot, an Israeli, is neither Egyptian nor Arab, to which many critics and fans despise. Morgan Jerkins, an American writer, commends Gadot but wishes for a much darker Cleopatra, while journalist Samira Khan calls out the casting team for making the wrong choice. Gadot nor Jenkins has commented on the criticism, and no word has been said as to when Cleopatra will start production. Sesame Street is set to air a new special discussing the topic of racism. The Muppets loved and cherished by fans will star in the special entitled The Power of We to learn about standing up to unfair treatment based on the color of skin or in their case, fur. Joined by guest blackish actress Yara Shahidi, Hamilton's Christopher Jackson, and singer Andre Day, the special aims to educate families on racism and the effects that it has on people. Sesame Street is no stranger when it comes to such complex issues with a representative stating, we believe that this moment calls for a direct discussion about racism to help children grasp the issues and teach them that they are never too young to be upstanders for themselves, one another, and their communities. The Power of Us is set to premiere October 15th on streaming platforms HBO Max and PBS 24-7. The virtual Billboard Music Awards are just around the corner, and after six months of uncertainty, the BBMAs are set for Wednesday the 14th in Los Angeles. Performances live throughout the ceremony will be conducted by BTS with their number one hit, Dynamite, Demi Lovato, Alicia Keys, and many more. Garth Brooks highlights the performances with a medley as he will be the re recipient of this year's Icon Award. Make sure to tune in on Wednesday night at 5 p.m. Pacific Time to find out who wins. 
That'll do it for me on the latest in entertainment. I'm Tristan Magalito, send it, sending it back to you, Monica. Get ready for some crazy deals. Amazon Prime Day deals will go live starting at midnight Pacific time and runs through Wednesday, October 14. Analysts expect the annual event to net huge profits. Prime Day is usually in the summer, but Amazon delayed it due to its pandemic this year. Amazon has created a new Watch This Deal button which enables customers to set an alert to be notified when specific products go on sale. This button is only available on Amazon mobile app, so make sure you don't miss them. To complete, Target and Walmart are offering sales event this week too. Also, with so many deals, the best way to take advantage is by downloading the Amazon app so you don't miss out. That's going to do it for us here at OC News. I'm Monica De La Rosa. From all of us here at OC News, have a good night. We'll see you back here on Wednesday at 5 p.m. for another edition of OC News. Bye.